As this is the final meeting of the program, there is no better time than the present to honor and thank an extraordinary group of individuals whose selfless devotion to the program's mission and goals has contributed mightily to its, its success. I'm referring, of course, to the site directors at the three participating universities and the members of our National Advisory Committee. So we'd like to begin by honoring the site directors whose dedication to the program is unsurpassed. They do the heavy lifting year in and year out at their respective sites, corralling, cajoling, and doing whatever is necessary to get faculty members to teach seminars, to mentor scholars, and to participate in collaborative research. Without their leadership and tireless efforts, the scholars would not enjoy the full benefits of the program in order to fulfill their professional goals. As I call your name, please come forward and receive a plaque honoring your service to the program. And Katie, I'd like you to come up here as well. Ann Keller. <laughs> Ann, she'll find her way up here eventually. Anne is the director of the Berkeley UCSF Scholars Program. She's the newest site director, having stepped into John Elwood's large shoes one year ago. And most importantly, when she assumed that role in 2015, she went in with eyes wide open, knowing full well that she would be directing the site during its final year. Talk about self-sacrifice and taking one for the team. But in many ways, Anne's dedication to the Berkeley UCSF site should come as no surprise. After all, she was a Cohort 9 scholar there years ago. Thank you, Anne, for being unselfish and for doing a great job this past year in leading the site, in working with Alicia Alvarez Villasenor and Elisa Fadaracci, and in organizing last October's conference on the future of health policy research funding. So we have something for you. Thank you. Edward Norton. <laughs> Edward is the director of the Michigan Scholars Program. He came to the University of Michigan with only one goal in mind, to succeed Paula Lance as director of the Michigan Scholars Program. <laughs> Now, I exaggerate slightly. The program wasn't his only reason for joining the Michigan faculty. There obviously were many other attractions. But the program indeed factored into his decision to make the move from Chapel Hill, and he succeeded Paula as site director in 2011. Now, many people over the years, especially NAC members, have opined that the Michigan program was and is a well-oiled machine that could operate efficiently without much oversight. So how difficult do you think Edward's job has been these past five <laughs> years? In truth, even well-oiled machines need clear direction and a little lubrication. Edward, you have done a marvelous job in Ann Arbor with the expert assistance of Teresa Ramirez and Gail Picknick, and we are grateful for your strong leadership. The Alumni Research Symposium in March was a fabulous success. Thank you. Kathy Swartz. <laughs> How soon we forget we're academics. Okay. <laughs> Kathy, as you know, is the director of the Harvard Scholars Program. She has been actively involved in the Harvard program since its inception, serving in a supporting role at first, but taking over the reins as director from Nicholas Christakis in 2005. For more than a decade, she has had to contend with internal politics at Harvard, with periodic uncertainty as to whether the program could retain its office space, and with the challenges of keeping faculty engaged in the program. One NAC member likened her to being the ship's captain, navigator, cook, engineer, and cabin steward running constantly from the wheelhouse 
to the mess hall, to the engine room, stopping periodically only to rearrange the deck chairs up top. <laughs> With the help of two dedicated faculty members, Peter Marsden and Mary Waters, and the able assistance of Sage Kochavi, Kathy, Kathy rose above these challenges and kept the ship afloat. Kathy, we thank you for 11 long years of leading the Harvard <laughs> program. And if ever there existed a non-denominational sainthood for the trials and tribulations of a site director, you would be the obvious recipient. What about Paul? <laughs> um, and finally, we'd like to recognize and honor John Elwood, who unfortunately could not be here tonight because of health reasons. As some of you may know, John has had back problems in recent years, and traveling to this meeting would have been very difficult for him. I told him that we would miss him terribly, but that we wouldn't want the program to inflict any more pain upon him than it has already <laughs> has. He says his regards to everyone present. John is the Dean of Site Directors, having served in a leadership capacity at the Berkeley UCSF Scholars Program from 2003 to 2015. First as Acting Director when Richard Scheffler was on sabbatical, then as Co-Director with Richard the following year, and subsequently as the one and only Director until passing the baton to Anne last year. Like Kathy, John also had to contend with the ugly inner workings of his university, which often conflicted with the goals of the scholar program. <laughs> At times, various crises arose, including restrictive union hiring practices that made it difficult to recruit and retain program staff, and periodic administrative snafus in which incoming cohorts of scholars sometimes did not receive program benefits as expected because a certain administrator in the School of Public Health, as one scholar told us, was, quote, gleefully unhelpful, end quote, in signing, in signing them up for health insurance, library access, and other necessities. <laughs> Throughout all of these episodes, John was unflappable. He provided steady leadership in the face of a complex Berkeley administrative infrastructure that he likened on more than one occasion to, quote, the last Stalinist bureaucracy on the face of the earth, end quote. We thank John for his stalwart efforts over the years. Tonight, by order of the Politburo, we honor him <laughs> as a hero of the Berkeley Soviet and confer upon him the order of Aaron Woldovsky, which, which is the Berkeley equivalent of the order of Alexander Nevsky, who, by the way, is a saint canonized by the Russian Orthodox Church. So unfortunately, John is not here, but we will be sending him his plaque. So,